Good morning. Pleasure to be with you this morning to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a joy it is to be with everyone. So it's much better to speak with all of you rather than talking to a camera and just Chuck. Chuck's great. It's been wonderful to this time, but it's great to have so many other bodies here uh, just as we worship our Lord and Savior this morning. So praise God. What a pleasure and joy to be here with all of you. Uh, so been been an interesting three months, right? <laughs> For sure. Uh, but we praise God we're able to gather again now. And uh, we, we're going to continue to record the service. Uh, and we're going to hopefully get that up this afternoon for other people that are still going to worship from home at this time. And we'll also have DVDs and continue to do that. And we're pretty close to having it so we can do it live as well. Have a live recording of that as well. We're pretty close to getting that taken care of as well. So just some other things to keep you updated on. Uh, just real quick, just uh, to share a couple announcements here. Uh, our, our Bible study will continue to meet this Wednesday night from 6 to 7.15 down in the Fellowship Hall. For, uh, just for those of you that will come into that, just praise God for that opportunity. Uh, the youth tonight are going to be meeting from 5 to 8 out of Dan's house, just kind of uh, to, just to celebrate the week, the mission trip that we were on this past week here right in Johnstown. We, we do praise God that that was able to happen this week. Uh, just, God really works in youth this week in so many ways. Uh, just we're able to get a lot done. So we're going to hear more about that uh, during the service this morning. And Dan's going to give a report on that. And we're going to see... Uh, some pictures and also a, a video of just the youth and their experiences. So we'll be giving our report on that today as well. Uh, a couple other announcements here. The, the baby bottles for Precious Life. Uh, there's some in the lobby back here if you want to pick one of those up and you can fill the, up the change um, and return that here to the church office and that'll all go to Precious Life, which is a great ministry which supports uh, women and babies in, in our community here. And uh, if you have one of those completed or filled, you can, you can get it to me, and I'll make sure we take care of that and get it to where it needs to go. So if, when you return those, you can give those uh, directly to me. Uh, all right, I think also Women's Fellowship is looking to meet on Monday, June 29th. Is that right, one? Yep, so Monday, June 29th, just for Women's Fellowship to be aware of that. And then one other announcement I know during the past few months, I've encouraged every uh, household just to pray. At 7 o'clock each evening, as you're able, or you know, sometime, it doesn't have to be strictly that time, but just gather together to pray. Obviously, we recognize that the coronavirus is still something that we're concerned about, uh, so continue to pray for healing for those with it, pray for the stop of its spread, and pray for salvation, uh, just for people to turn to the Lord in, in our nation. And we also, I would say, let's add to that, let's be praying for our nation. Obviously, uh, the last few weeks have been a very just tumultuous week. Uh, there's been a lot of tragedies and just a lot of heartache. And a lot of things that are really difficult, I think, to grasp, too, as well. So just pray for uh, for our nation, for reconciliation, for healing, uh, just a path forward uh, for uh, just all those different things, all those d difficult issues that we're wrestling with as a nation, uh, a lot of different directions. But let us pray for our nation. Let's pray for a turning to the gospel and repentance, turning to the Lord, uh, just on every front. That's just where we need to be. We need to be turning to Him. So let's continue to pray for that in this time. So. All right, are there any announcements this morning? And Mary Lou, go ahead. I, I have to say, it's been three months and I haven't, haven't sold any valid gift cards for the United Churches, so I just, I have to say that it's a way to support United Churches and we do need to support our local, our local restaurants and things and that's, that's a way to support them, so if you're interested in a valid gift card, I have it. All right, yes. So it's, we missed that, but that announcement would be announced. So Bella gift cards, yes, uh, that support United Church. It also supports local business, too, as well. But yeah, uh, you can see Mary Lou about those as well, and uh, that would be great. So thank you. All right, yes, well, I guess Chuck, yeah, go ahead. At Camp Harmony, they've been having for the campground site a Bible study. Adele and I went to it last night. Uh, it is uh, Saturdays. That no, was uh, 7 o'clock. Yeah, 7 o'clock. Um, it's mainly... The, the people in the campus there, but anyone is, is welcome to come. Um, this uh, this next Saturday, Pastor Rob Wolf will be uh, speaking at the Bible study, and um, their, their main book that they're looking at is Galatians. And it's up by the trading post. Yes. Okay. So out of Camp Army, up by the trading post, they're having a Bible study opportunity. Uh, that's a Saturday night at 7, so that's only an opportunity in this time as well. All right. Uh, yeah, I do, just as we're coming back together, together again, obviously, thank you for your prayers the last few months, uh, just for our church family. Thank you for your prayers for Chuck and I and Dan and kind of uh, other people involved, Norma, <laughs> just as we've been trying to 
put these videos together week to week. Uh, obviously, we had a lot. Chuck and I and Dan had a lot of fun with the children's stories at times. I think you guys noticed that. Um, we had a good time with some of that, but thank you for your prayers during the past few months, and just continue to pray for our congregation as well. So I appreciate uh, Chuck, Dan, Norma, um, just others that came in at points to help in service as well. Uh, just thank you for uh, just your help and your ministry and worship of the Lord during that time as well. So. All right, uh, let me just begin with the scripture this morning. This is uh, Psalm 46, and I, I think I read this early on in the, during the coronavirus stuff. Um, I can't remember, I should have looked if it was during an encouraging word, perhaps, but anyways, let me read from Psalm 46 as we begin our time this morning, and I'll have our opening prayer. So God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear that the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And truly that last line, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He has been that for us these past three months and he will continue to be that uh, this day. And as we move forward, so we praise God for the assurance of uh, his, his almighty strength that is with us. So we praise God for that this morning as we gather in worship. Now let us, uh, let me have an opening prayer for us this morning. Dear Father, we thank you so much for your great love for us, your goodness to us, your grace. Thank you that you have been with us and you have uh, guided us these past three months. Thank you for allowing us to continue to worship during that time. Uh, just obviously a different format, but thank you that we've had that, that chance just to worship you and praise you and draw close to you. Lord, thank you that whether we're here or whether we're at home or wherever we are, that the Lord Almighty, you are with us and you are our refuge and our fortress. Lord, just be with us as we worship this morning. May you be glorified and lifted up and exalted and just bless us as we draw near to you. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, please stand as you're able to sing our opening hymn, Brethren, we have met to worship, and we will be singing the first two verses. So the words will be on the screen. Please stand as you're able. Thank you.
shared, with, shared that with Dan. I was like, Dan, I really think that Florida wants us to stay here and do projects here around town. And of course, that was before January, before anything, all this happened. So, of course, March, coronavirus happens, all that. And if we had been going with another organization like we've done in the past and going to other places, that trip would have never happened. Um, so the Lord really knew ahead of time and was preparing that and also really just allowed us to recognize just the great needs that our own community has and seeing our needs in our own backyard. Uh, so praise God for that, just the Lord working. Really had a great week of ministry. So I'm not going to say more, so I'll let Dan come on up and let him uh, share. And he's going to share for a little bit. And there's going to be some pictures scrolling through as well as Dan speaks just to give you an idea of some of the things we did this week. And then after Dan shares, uh, there's going to be about a three-minute video, four-minute video of each of the youth uh, sharing as well. So, all right. Thanks again. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, church. All right. It is an absolute honor and privilege for me to be able to stand up here and share with you. First of all, I want to thank uh, all of you here at Scout, the congregation, for your support of the youth and the opportunity that we had this week to be a blessing to the area and the Johnson community. I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, all of the youth. I mean, absolutely stand-up job. All the youth that are here, we um, did a lot of great work. It, it was. It was hard at times, but um, definitely did a lot of hard work. And um, I want to give a big shout-out to Pastor Mark and thank him for his support of me and the youth and for all his hard work um, this past week. It was just absolutely awesome. And uh, we were able to split up our groups and get more work done because of Pastor Mark and because of some chaperones. So we had some awesome chaperones as well. We had uh, Chuck and Adele helped us out. We're thankful for that. Chrissy helped us out. We're thankful for her. Uh, for Gail as well. We're just thankful for them for the, them coming and helping the youth and really putting in hard work also, so and I want to, um, besides the chaperones, give a big shout out to Dave Williams, who I talked to this morning on the phone, who set up um, these sites and these things for us to do and was really there the whole time. We used his tools, we used a lot of uh, his things, and we're thankful for him and his wife, Becca, too. They are uh, awesome people, and um, I'm glad that we were able to work with them this past week. So, also, we brought our own lunches during the day, but there were some people that provided food that were just awesome. And it was great to be able to, at the end of the day, have a good meal and, um, and eat with everybody and go through kind of our end of the day talk about stuff and highs and lows and um, really talk about our theme through the day. So, I want to thank um, Steve and Della who are parents of uh, one of the youth. Her name is Emma. Um, she, I don't know, look, this was her first week with the youth, but she told me she wants to come back. Chris and I have been working with her for the past few years. At New Age, she's been a part of our youth down there, so it's great to have her. They provided socks and pizza on Monday, and we're very thankful for them doing that. Um, I want to... Um, yeah, I want to thank all, all kinds of people here. So we had Rizzo's. We definitely want to thank Norman and the Kriegers for Rizzo's. They provided a meal. Um, we want to thank um, Lisa Lees and, uh, and Donna Kaiser who provided uh, Tuesday's meal and uh, a New Day as well because Wednesday we ate down there. We had a block party down there, so we were able to eat down there. Um, Thursday, I mean, uh, like it was a taco extravaganza by uh, Mary Lou and the Hoffmans, which was just awesome. And uh, thankful for everybody who pitched in, everybody that came and helped for your prayers, for um, everybody doing that. You know, we had from about 9 to 13 youth throughout the week. And... Um, I mean, like I said, they did awesome work. You're seeing some pictures up here of just kids really in the heat 
really digging down and getting some work done. But I want to, you know, thank those those four chaperones as well that allowed us to be able to split up and get this work done. So each morning at about 8.15, just to educate you, let you know about what we did, we met down at New Day. And we were able to come together, have a little snack, pray, begin our day, wake up. You know, as I'm sure a lot, all of you probably know, kids are, you know, have a little hard time waking up in the morning. So we were able to kind of get them up and moving and um, get them going. And then we were able to, uh, from there, just kind of go over our key verse. And we went through different attributes of the Lord that I'll get into. But the key verse that we focused on this week was from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. And it says this, You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. Amen. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So day one, we focused on servanthood, on being a servant, what that means. And I was able to share there. It was pretty awesome in the morning and then at the end of the day as well. And we went to the Point Stadium. So we had one group go to the Point Stadium and another group go over to Roxbury. And at the Point, we pulled a lot of weeds. And when I say a lot, I, I mean a lot. Pulled a lot of weeds. And, uh, and we mulched. So, pulled a lot of weeds, knocked down a bunch of weeds, I know I did mistakenly, um, or the guy wasn't happy about it. I was told to do it, but yeah, anyway. I, I weeded an area in front of a hotel that, you know, I probably shouldn't have. The guy wasn't happy about it, but it looks, it looks good, and uh, I was told to do it, so, you know, yeah, so... Anyway, it was awesome to serve that day. Pastor Morch Group went to Roxbury. And why they were so happy, some of the youth, is because they got to demo um, some dugouts. So they got to knock down some dugouts. I was a little bummed. I wasn't able to do that. But, you know, they got to do it. The kids were super excited about that because we all know demolition is really fun, especially for youth, right? So... <laughs> It was great. Then we came back to New Day for pizza and subs um, from Delo. It was, it was great. We were able to debrief and go through our highs and lows. The kids left around 6.30. It was a full day, and it was awesome. Tuesday, again, bright and early. 8.15, New Day, Pastor Mark shared about humility and what that looks like, being humble and uh, serving and being humble, right? God was the perfect example of that Jesus was and so we're so thankful uh, for the opportunity to talk to the kids about that um, so we shared scripture about that and all that and we went back to the point so they did an awesome job we finished up at the point pretty much we did as much mulching and as much weed pulling as we could and the kids did awesome it was really hot on Tuesday but um, the kids really went above and beyond and really dug deep. It was uh, fantastic to see all that weeding, and it looks great. Next time you're down at the point, check out the mulch and the non-weeds, and the kids can be proud of that because they did that. So it's fantastic. And then we uh, went back. We came here for, for food from Lisa on Tuesday night. It was just awesome. It was a great time to just fellowship and be together. Then Wednesday, bright and early again at New Day, um, and we had our very own youth, Stephen, share 
about self-denial, denying self, and he did an absolutely awesome job. It was awesome to see that and, um, and have him share. And we, uh, I mean, that was great. What a blessing that was. We were able to uh, split up, go into two different groups, and we went throughout the community. Some of us went to the West End to work at playgrounds. And the other group went to Moxham and then to Hornerstown. And what we were able to do was to wipe down and just kind of clean all those things that the kids were getting on with cleaner and new greaser. Yes, we did more weeding. Yes, we did. It was more weeding, but we were also able to paint some of the uh, little pavilion areas at the playgrounds, which was awesome. And Horner Sound walks in the West End. They did a great job, and it was really an awesome, just, it was awesome to see the kids really giving back to the community and all their hard work. They did just a, a fantastic job. And then we ended up back at New Day for the block party, as I said, where we ate and fellowship together and in the community with Kernville. Um, some of the kids came over, some of the local kids right there on Somerset Street. And there's some, some good neighbors down there for New Day. Um, Thursday, Pastor Mark shared uh, about obedience, which was awesome. The, the youth worked hard at New Day. I want to thank you, church and congregation, um, the youth and the funds that were able to make what happened on the New Day happen. There's some pictures of the outside of New Day at the beginning. And then uh, at the end, if you get on Facebook, Dan Rupert, um, Facebook, I have a lot of pictures up and there are probably some that are going to show, but we rocked the outside and it looks really good with the river rock. I mean, just all the hard work, we thank you for that and allowing us to do that. Um, like I said, Pastor Mark shared about obedience. The youth worked real hard and it looks awesome, absolutely. And I just am so thankful for it. And uh, Pastor Mark's crew went over to the community garden there in Kernville, as you can see right there. And um, that's the picture. And that's the garden. And they really blessed Teresa Cunningham, who is um, kind of in charge of that. She kind of runs that, manages that there. Has been asking me for a while to have a crew. I'm so grateful that we were able to give her a crew there and put that work in. And I know they were a blessing to her, and she was a blessing to them. I know that as I've uh, talked to both Chrissy and Pastor Mark about it since then. We just want to thank them so much for that. Then we came back and had a great meal, all kinds of tacos. As uh, Mr. Denny said, if you went home hungry that night, it was your own fault because there was all kinds of food and uh, grateful for grateful for everybody that provided meals. And um, it was just pretty, pretty awesome. And then on Friday, we're back, last day, we're trying to get the kids excited. I kept saying fourth quarter. They kept telling me to be quiet and stop saying it. But I kept saying fourth quarter, it's fourth quarter, we're getting so close, we got to dig deep, right? So I kept saying that, we had some fun with that throughout the week, we had a lot of fun, just, you know, razzing each other a little bit, putting in hard work, and just getting getting our relationship growing, I mean, it's, it's really good, the youth group's really starting to come together, and what a blessing it is to be able to be a part of that, I'm very grateful for that. Um, and so Pastor Mark started um, that day by talking about sympathy, which was, uh, which was pretty awesome, talking about that at the beginning of the day. And then I ended it with talking about exaltation. And um, I ended the day Friday. But um, Pastor's crew finished up. Um, New day, which, I, like I said, was awesome. And... Um, we were able to go to the Women's Health Center, and that was an awesome opportunity for us. Um, with Becca, really helped us out, and uh, she was able to take us on a tour, show us what they do up there, what an important place that is. And uh, for the women who need help, they can go there and get the help that they need. And we're grateful that we were able to do that work up there for them. And so, like I said, I'm very grateful for Becca and the job that she does up there. It was awesome to be a part of that. And um, 
I had a lot of people comment. I was, like I said, posting a lot of pictures on Facebook. And um, I had a lot of people comment on what we were doing and how grateful they were to us and the uh, youth group for the work that they did. The community is very thankful for it. The community is looking better. The areas that we went to and what we did, I thank the youth for the hard work that they put in um, and for what they did. Tonight, the youth, rather than coming here for the youth group, they're going to come to mine and Chris's house and we're going to have a fun night for them. We're going to have yard games, a lot of pizza, wings, food, and we're going to have some fun together to celebrate the week that we had. It is an absolute honor and privilege to be able to be the, the youth director here at Scalp and for the youth group and what they were able to do this week. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to share with you. Thank you for your support. God bless. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, it was, uh, I'll just add a little, just real quick before we get, we're still getting to the, to the youth. Uh, but yeah, it was a joy just to be with the youth all week. I'm going to share a little more during my message time as well. But uh, we are so blessed to have Dan with us and Chris both. Uh, just so blessed to have you guys part of our congregation working with our youth, uh, just sharing their heart for the Lord, uh, their heart for ministry, and just uh, sharing their love for the Lord with these youth. Uh, so really, uh, it's great to be able to serve alongside them this week and just be in ministry together and partner with that. Um, so we are so blessed to have both of you guys be a part of us. So thank you very much. Uh, so let's give them a hand. <laughs> yeah. Real quick, can we give a hand to the youth? Yeah. First to God, the youth, and everybody that helped out this week. Let's just give them a hand. Crazy. Let, me, uh, let me get to it here. This is, I'll just talk through some of these real quick while I'm at them. That's at Harmony House. Or no, not Harmony House. No, uh, that's at the Women's Health Center. Digging mulch. Um, this is digging out uh, some pot, uh, some uh, fence posts. That was a good time. Stephen enjoyed that, right? Yeah, Stephen enjoyed that. Fun. I had fun with that. That was good. Uh, I think that was still. This is all the Women's Health Center. Just some of the mulching and things we did. So that's some of that finished product there. That's finished. Yeah. That's fine. And the next slide that I click to, it'll start. So, uh, hopefully. <laughs> so, anyways, the next is going to be about a four minute video. Uh, and they'll have each youth uh, that, that went. Um, they're going to say their name. Actually, Taryn didn't say his name and Tyler. That's because I forgot to tell him. Anyways, that's my fault. So, those are the first two kids. Taryn, you'll recognize him. Tyler, who's been coming part of the youth group for uh, the last year. He'll be the second kid. After that, they'll say their name. They're going to say their uh, favorite thing from the week, you know, their highlight of the week. And then they're going to say what the Lord taught them this week or how they grew in the relationship with the Lord. So they'll be answering those two questions. Their highlight for the week and what the Lord taught them this week. So, all right, hopefully I'll click this and it'll start. My favorite thing about this week was painting and what the Lord taught me was helping people with school. My favorite thing about the week was I spending time with the Lord and He taught me how to work. Jonathan, my favorite thing of the week was hanging out with my friends while working, and the Lord taught me how to become more obedient. My name is Steve. My favorite part of the week was doing all the work and just seeing the completion of it, seeing all the people that drove by and helped their moments and everybody that was so moved by it, and what we were doing there as a youth group. And I grew my relationship in the Lord with that, being a servant and the different character qualities of that, like being humble, having obedience, and self-denial. Uh, I'm Elijah Smith, and today we went and uh, helped out over at the Women's Center. And my favorite thing was spending time with my people from youth group. And uh, the thing that God spoke to me about today was being more sympathetic towards others and understanding their problems. Hi, uh, my name is John Miller, and today we went to the Women's Health Center to help their garden. And my favorite thing today was just working around everyone. And what God taught me today is patience and how to get along with people. Hi, my name is Jacob. Uh, my favorite thing throughout this week was seeing how much all the people appreciated what work we were doing. And one thing I learned through Christ was that no matter what you're working out through the week, He's always going to teach you something. My name is Micah, and this
This week I really enjoyed just hanging out with friends and getting good work done. And I really liked uh, seeing the mess that it was before and then how better it looked afterwards. And this week God taught me how to be a good servant and how to serve the people of Jonestown in beautifying everything. My name is Larissa. My favorite thing of the week was painting and the Lord. The Lord taught me. The Lord taught me that He can show Himself through people. Okay, my name is Emma, and my favorite thing of the week was being able to help the community and make it look better. And Christ has taught me how to sympathize for others and care about other people more than myself. My name is Jordan. My favorite part about the mission trip this week was seeing everyone work together. The Lord taught me how to be a servant. Hi, my name is Ashley Floyd. My favorite thing about this week was that we all got to work together in fellowship, but we also got to better the city of Johnstown where we live. And this week the Lord taught me that even though we may live in an area that is better kept, there are a lot of places around us that still need the Lord's message to reach them and to help them. My name is Heath Moser, and my favorite thing from this week was being able to hang out with many different cool people and do many things with them. And the Lord taught me this week how to be, obe how to be obedient. My name is Joe. Uh, my favorite thing this week was probably getting to spend time with the entire youth group and just getting to work together and spend time with them and get to know them better. And uh, the thing that I really learned this week from, that the Lord kind of taught me was that no matter what you're doing, no matter how small it may seem, there's always someone that's going to appreciate it and uh, be very thankful for what you did. Alright, very good. So, yeah, I appreciate the youth taking the time real quick on Friday to do that. So great to hear from them just about their week and how they grew in the Lord. So praise God for that. All right, uh, we're going to go to the Lord in just for a time of prayer now, and obviously we just rejoice in just what was just shared and all that, and just you know, spend some time just praising God for that. That's obviously a joy for, for Dan and I for the whole week, and <laughs> just uh, being with the youth and seeing the Lord at work in so many ways, so we praise God for that. Uh, does if anyone else have any just joys uh, or just concerns you'd like to mention this morning? So I get, get, got to get back used to doing this. Usually I haven't been able to do this past three months. So. Any joys or concerns this morning you'd like to share? You like Zeb? You like Zeb? And celery. Celery. <laughs> so I can't do it on the spot. Yes, I had a fun time too with this. So praise God, that's uh, the ways that you can do ministry in different ways. So thank you, Carol, for sharing. Yeah, praise God for that. <laughs> yeah, no. So uh, pr praise God for just uh, thank you for your prayers for Marie Chibi and she's finished up summer treatments and uh, just things are going well. We'll just be with her. She prepares for for radiation as well. So all right. Dina. Yeah, so praise God just for his 
just preparation for us heading into everything that happened the past few months. Just that he provided the means we needed for, for ministry in a lot of different capacities. Uh, so we praise God. God, thanks for sharing that check for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Audrey. I thank you all for your prayers, and I thank you all for your cards and communications. I am doing a little bit better, but I'm still struggling with some drainage issues. And um, waiting to get into the gastroenterologist. So yeah, thank you for your prayers for Audrey, uh, she, but uh, continue to pray for her as well. She continues to have uh, some issues, some drainage issues and things, and she's looking to get into the doctor. Uh, so just continue to lift her up in prayer uh, in this time that we, we're glad you're able to join us and be with us. So, so yeah, praise God. Yeah. Ron? <clears throat> praise God that our son, Steve, is, uh, his score is finally open. He's back to work. Today's his first day after three months off. He has a new store in Harrisburg, but has, but he hasn't worked there yet because of the uh, pandemic. So uh, he's uh, he has a job for now. You know, J.C. Penney's is still in, in, in limbo, but uh, he's back to work today. Okay. All right. So praise God for Steve being able to get back to work today. Uh, just out in Harrisburg, he, out, he moved obviously during this time too. So just. Uh, a praise for him being settled in there all right, but now also being able to start work. So just continue praise for that. Yeah. Right, anyone else? Susan? Yeah. We just want to thank the Lord for the blessing of a new baby arriving here in short six weeks. Uh, we found out on Friday that it is a boy. So we're pretty excited. <laughs> yeah, so excited for a new baby boy coming here from uh, Patrick and Grace in about five, six weeks, somewhere in there. So <laughs> Grace would probably say, like, Tomorrow, you know. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So praise God for a new new baby boy for them, and we're so excited for your whole family. Absolutely, so, yeah. All right. Anyone else? All right. Well, let us go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm actually gonna come over here. I'm gonna continue to do what I was doing during the coronavirus song. I actually need a little song. Anyways, <laughs> I just feel like let's continue. to be just in your presence and uh, just as the song and we'll just play, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And we thank you so much for that, Father. Thank you for your presence. You're on your toes, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for being present with us these past three months, even as we've uh, worshipped in our own homes. And, and, and uh, just, it's been different, of course, but Lord, we know that your presence has been among us, that your spirit is moving in our hearts and drawing us close to you. Lord, that there's nothing that can separate us from I thank you so much for that, Lord. Thank you that you are our refuge and our strength, Lord, that you are with us day in and day out. Uh, though the world may be going crazy and falling apart in many ways, and just those things that are so far out of our control, we know that they are not inside of your sovereign control, Lord, and we know that you are working in every situation that is happening. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the comfort and security that we have in you and your love uh, and your salvation, Lord. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus, who you've given us. Uh, that we can have hope in this life, Lord, that we wake up each morning um, with hope, with joy, with peace because of what your Son has done in our hearts, that you have transformed us, you have delivered us from sin, you've forgiven us, you've healed us. Lord, I thank you so much for that. Lord, I thank you so much for the promise of, of eternal life through Christ as well, Lord, just the hope that we have, uh, the struggles, the trials that we face in this life are, uh, you know, are just are momentary, and they're uh, just temporary not things that will endure, but Lord, we, we have the, the certain hope through your Son, Jesus, of, of eternal life, and just that that guides us and strengthens us each day. Lord, I, I thank you for, for forgiving us and healing us always. Uh, Lord, I just uh, thank you that we can come into your presence. Lord, I thank you that you've given us the gift also of being able to be your representatives, to be 
your ambassadors in this world, Lord, and you, you recognize that uh, we live in the midst of a, a sinful and fallen world, and we recognize that you have rescued us from that, Lord, that that was your work in our lives, your grace, your salvation, your, your, your son's finished work on the cross that has rescued us from that. And thank you that you have saved us, and thank you that we get to be uh, your servants in this world, that we get to represent you, that we get to carry forth the word of life, uh, the gospel, with our lives and with our actions, that we can carry forth your word, uh, your salvation, and share that with others. Lord, I thank you for the chance that the, the youth had this past week just to serve in our local community. I thank you so much for the ways that they represented you, that they represented you as servants, uh, as they uh, denied self, as they were, they were humble and, and obedient to your call in their lives. I thank you for the ways that they shared uh, the gospel through their actions, through their words, just through their time with one another, and just through the ways that you were glorified and by their, uh, by their example this week. Lord, I thank you for that. Thank you for, for Dan, and thank you for his ministry with you. Continue to strengthen and encourage him, and, and Chris as well, just that you lift both of them up as they minister to our youth, that you would just fill them with your spirit, uh, just to guide and direct them. Lord, and we thank you for all the other people that helped out this week as well, and just in so many different ways, uh, just to help uh, the youth and to minister to them in this time, and just to allow them to, to be all that they can be. So I thank you for all the, 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 the hands-on church that just uh, blessed them this week. Father, what a joy it is uh, to be back in your presence, and uh, Lord, just to be able to, to hear prayer requests uh, from one another. Lord, I just want to lift up these real quick to you as well. Uh, just thank you that we can come before you. Lord, we, we thank you for the for the puppet shows during the time of ministry these past few months. Just thank you for uh, just how we can worship you in creative and new ways, and we thank you for the joy of that. Uh, we just thank you for the blessing that was in this time. Lord, we thank you for Marie Chippy doing, doing well and just moving through treatment, and Continue to be with her as she continues uh, to have treatment coming as well. Just continue to watch over her. Uh, Lord, we just lift up the, the praises from Dina just for again being back here. Thank, thank you for protecting our region really uh, in so many ways from the coronavirus. Uh, Lord, we continue to pray for the stop of that spread of the coronavirus. And we continue to pray for salvation in this time. Lord. We thank you for the birthdays as well uh, for, for Milo and uh, for Carl yesterday too. We just thank you for those birthdays of our young ones and just continue to bless their lives. May they be filled with your goodness and your grace. We pray for uh, just the praises from Chuck as well, just how God, how you worked through this situation, how you just prepared us in advance for what was coming, and just open up uh, avenues of worship, avenues of ways we can uh, share your gospel during this time. Uh, we didn't know what was coming, but you did, and that just, again, reminds us of your sovereignty, your control, and just thank you for allowing us to minister effectively during this time uh, because of your preparation for us. Lord, we continue to lift up Audrey. We thank you that she's with us. Thank you that she has more strength and is, is doing better in some ways. But Lord, we, we ask for your continued hand and blessing upon her, for your, her full healing, for her strength to fully recover. Lord, we pray for her and, and lift her up to you this day. And allow her to be able to get into the doctor. Um, and she's got appointments set up, but just may that even happen uh, sooner than that day. But we just, just pray for her that you would strengthen and encourage her. Pray for her full healing. Lord, we also thank you for Steve being able to open up uh, his store. Lord, we just thank you that for him and just providing a new place for him there. Just bless him as he, as he starts there. Just uh, that you would watch over him, give him wisdom and discernment, and just draw near to him, Lord. And I just may seek you as he begins uh, working in that story. Lord, we also just praise you for, for the new baby boy uh, coming from Patrick and Grace. We thank you for this life. Uh, just thank you for uh, him, Lord. Thank you that you have every day of his life number, and you know every single thing about him, and that you created him for a purpose, Lord. I pray for uh, this child to know you, to love you as Lord and Savior, and just to know your full purpose for his life. Bless Pastor Patrick and Grace as parents. Just go before them and fill them with your spirit for that just critical role, and just bless them as they uh, grow as parents. And we, with all the family, just pray your blessing upon them uh, as they receive this uh, new life into their family. Father, we thank you and praise you again so much for your great love for us. Lord, we do want to just, just real quick pray for our community. We pray for our nation. We pray for salvation, for revival. Lord, we desperately need you. We desperately need your presence in our lives. And we need your gospel just to penetrate hearts. Lord, we recognize that the things that our nation is facing right now are very challenging, very complex, and um, difficult to wrap my mind around, I know. Um, but Lord, I, I know that in the midst of all the challenges our nation is facing, uh, that the answer to each is that we would turn to you, we would turn to your gospel, we would repent and know you as Lord and Savior, uh, and just that we would all see one another through uh, your eyes, Lord. Just 
may there be salvation and revival in our nation, may there be healing, may there be reconciliation, uh, may there be peace, and just may we draw near to you, may our uh, hearts uh, turn to you. We thank you and praise you, Lord, for your love for us and goodness. Uh, just bless us as we continue to worship this morning. Christ's name. This time, uh, I'm going to just mention about the offering. Uh, at, at the end of the service, we will have offering plates in the lobby on either end of uh, the hallway here. So just on your way out, you can uh, drop that in. And that's just kind of how we're going to do that during this time. That's, that'll be the process for that. Uh, but let us now just, let's just sing one uh, hymn, uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It'll be him. Uh, I have a lot to say the number because we're not going to pick up in intervals. <laughs> Anyways, it's going to be on the screen. What a Friend We Have in Jesus, verses 1 through 2. All right, please stand as you're ready. Of the kingdom. 
And we, of course, we reach the climax of what it means to be a citizen of the kingdom of God by looking at the picture of Jesus in Philippians 2, 5, and 11, which is what Dan already reflected on some this morning. We saw Jesus' servant nature, his humbleness, his humility. Uh, we looked at his meekness, uh, the denial of self, uh, Jesus' obedience, uh, his sacrificial you know, life, you know, sacrificial living, and his sacrificial death on the cross for us. And we also, um, something we looked at this week on Friday with the youth was the idea of Jesus' sympathy. That he saw our sinful state, he saw our suffering, and he entered into that suffering with us. And so we've really led to that point of saying that is what it looks like to live in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. You know, what it means is to live like Christ, to follow his example. And I really enjoyed uh, the opportunity to share these, this passage with you this week, as well as Dan. You know, Dan shared with him as well, and just really to dig into this passage this week with the youth about that. And, but it was also really a greater enjoyment to. Uh, see the youth live that out throughout the week, you know, to have that servant nature, to have that humbleness, to have that obedience, and just really seeing them live that out. It was really a pleasure to see that this week, so praise God for that. Uh, last week, one of the things we reflected on was, uh, in, in the sermon last week, was just the gracious work of God in our lives through Christ, and then our response of repentance. And so just a thought with that, you know, when we know the transforming power of God in our lives, and we know the depth of Christ's love, uh, we know the incredible richness of his character uh, and what he's done for us. It draws us to worship and stand in awe of him, but that also opens our eyes to our sinfulness and brokenness and how far we are from him. And so thus we are called to respond humbly in repentance and to move forward, fleeing from sin and pursuing God with all our heart. You know, no longer do we crave sin in the world and the flesh, but by grace we desire God and more of him and his goodness in our lives. You know, godly, godly repentance produces a life of humility before God. Uh, it produces a life of service to Him and others. It, it produces a life lived in self-denial and for the glory of God. It produces a life of obedience to our King who saved us and set us free. Or, and in other words, it produces a life lived in a manner worthy of the Gospel. And that's something we are called to as individuals, we're called to as a church, to live in that, that manner worthy of the Gospel. And we do so by working out our salvation with, with fear and trembling. Uh, yes, as the scripture I read this morning mentioned, we work out our salvation out in fear and trembling. You know, and, and that's the full recognition, again, of our flesh and our absolute need for Christ and His power in our lives. And while, but in the meantime, we also live out that manner worthy of the gospel with confidence because it is God who works in us uh, to will and to act according to His good purpose. Um, so, I can think how in my own life I've seen that interplay where there's that fear and trembling sometimes of just recognizing, man, I know my flesh, I know my sinfulness, and I need to really be, you know, kind of fearful in that sense and just wanting to honor God in my life as I, you know, don't want my flesh to consume me. Um, but on the other side, we also see the great, I've seen the great confidence of I know the Lord is working in my life to will and to act according to His good purpose. Um, and that's something I think definitely you this week, just seeing God working in their lives to will and act uh, according to His good purpose, just seeing God's power upon their lives, and they have every reason to be confident because God is working in you. I see you know, Micah, uh, Stephen, uh, Tia's here today, just, you know, you, you have every reason to be confident. The Lord is working through you, so praise God for that. Uh, and then last week also, we, we began to look at this verse, uh, do everything without complaining or grumbling. How many of you guys like that verse? <laughs> no, 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 probably. You guys are all grumbling and complaining about it. No. Uh, you, I, I read that verse, it convicts me. And I think for all of us, that verse really should convict us and stop us in our tracks. Um, you know, how easy is it for us to grumble and complain? It, it just is. Um, you know, why do we do so well? Some, usually it's because we don't get our way. Uh, or something goes wrong, there's unmet expectations, there's hardships, suffering, whatever it may be. Uh, I think something we need to consider with this verse as well is, well, what are the things we complain about? Are they really worth complaining? Are they really weighty issues? You know, much of our grumbling is typically over, typically over trivial matters and more about us keeping control of our own lives. I know that's true for me. And the placement of this verse, though, is so important because it's verse 14, but it's just come after verses 5 through 11, which is everything about Christ. Um, so it's basically, you know, Paul is saying, you know, do everything without grumbling or complaining. Remember what I just said about Jesus. You know, that Jesus, remember how he lived, his humility. His denial of self, his laying aside his divine privileges, his obedience, his obedience even to death, death on the cross. You know, so when you think about that, is, is there any room for grumbling or complaining when you consider uh, what Christ did and how he lived? And I think part of the issue for us with this verse, why it's so challenging, is 
You know, a lot of times it's a question, well, where is your focus? And Jesus was perfectly focused on the Father and His will. And He walked in obedience to the Father out of His love for the Father and also out of His love for us. And He was also completely sure and confident in the Lord's love for Him. And so I think for us to have that same attitude as Christ, to, to not grumble, to complain, all that, our focus truly needs to be on the Father and His will for us. Um, and if it truly is there, how, how could we grumble and complain against Him? When we know also, when we know the infinite cost He paid for us when He gave us His Son. And so truly there is no room for arguing and complaining. Uh, but rather we are to embrace the attitude and character of Christ so that we may become blameless and pure children of God. Um, just to reflect on that with the youth this week, their attitude this week, um, there, there really was a relative lack of complaining and grumbling. I mean, there might have been here and there. I'm not going to say we're perfect. Of course not. But generally speaking, there was relative, uh, a relative lack of grumbling and complaining. And it was hard work. I mean, Tuesday, if you guys, any of you are outside working Tuesday or at all, it was probably 93. And that was the day we were at the Point Stadium. So no, no shelter at all. Uh, but really, they worked hard and kept at it. So that's why I just want to commend the youth for that as well. Um, just demonstrating that attitude to us. I mean, it was hard work. And you can see through the pictures what was accomplished throughout the week. That's another thing. When there's a lack of grumbling and complaining, there's a lot that is accomplished. And so I, I praise God for the youth and what they accomplished this week in that way. And something for us just to, to be blessed by in our own lives and, and to learn from. Moving through this a little more, just it goes on to say, you know, what is the, the result of doing everything without complaining or arguing? It says, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, from which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. Uh, so the result of doing everything without complaining and arguing is that we may become blameless and pure children of God. You know, the result really is that we live in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. You know, we live with that attitude of Christ. Live humbly, live obediently, live as servants, we deny self. You know, a heart that does not grumble and complain is a heart that is surrendered fully to Christ and the Father's will. You know, it's a heart that is repented, it's a heart that has denied self and has taken up the cross in order to follow Him. And so the result also is such a person is, is blameless and pure because they have received Christ and they have received His purity in their lives. And they are called children of God. They, that means they're walking in obedience to the Father. And they're without fault as they stand righteous based on the blood of Christ that has covered their sin. And then in turn, they live in the midst of a crooked and depraved generation of the world. Um, so it goes on and says that. And it's, I think that's a huge reminder again that Jesus, he was perfect. He was blameless, pure. He was the Son of God. And he came and he lived in the midst of a crooked and uh, depraved generation, a crooked and depraved world. He came and lived in, in our midst. And likewise, we too, we live in the midst of a fallen world. And we're also called to go forth into it as blameless and pure children of God, uh, without fault in which we shine like stars in the universe, as the verse says. And so just as Christ came as the light of the world, we too are called to shine like stars into a dark world that desperately needs a light that shines from, forth from us. And so what is that light that we carry? What is the light that we, that we, that we stand firm in? Uh, that light is the word of life. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that really brings us back full circle to the idea of conducting ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Um, again, your, our, your life is, a, is to be a living testimony, a living light of the gospel of Christ as his, as his children. Uh, your calling is to live in a manner worthy of the gospel that has saved you in order that you may hold out the gospel. Uh, the word of life to a crooked and depraved world that desperately needs the salvation that is in Christ, uh, just as you desperately need it as well. And we hold to it, we cling to it because we need it, but we also hold to it and cling to it because the world needs it. And the youth this week, they lived up to this calling this week by their example and witness to our community. They were holding out the word of life by their actions, uh, by their words, by conversations, things that they were able to participate in this week. And I think you know, it's, we should rejoice in that and, and we need to learn from their Example. And I kind of echo uh, what Paul says in verse 16. He says, um, I'll finish up with this. He says, As you hold out the word of life, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. Uh, you know, and just really, Paul is just, you know, he's boasting in the Philippians because he's seen their obedience, he's seen their example. And, and Paul's just boasting that, you know, hey, the work that I poured into you, I'm seeing it in your lives. And he's praising God for that. He's boasting before the Lord about that. Uh, and that's something this, I just want to rejoice in youth, rejoice in Dan, rejoice in the work uh, that everyone did this week, 
uh, because it was not in vain at all. It was holding out the word of life, proclaiming the gospel in our community. And hopefully that's something we can expand on and grow as the Lord leads. And we praise God for that. So uh, just so, again, all of us, let us all rejoice in the youth this week, their example to us, uh, showing us how to act without grumbling and complaining, showing us how to live their lives as a testimony and uh, holding out the word of life and really walking and conducting themselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. We have so much to be proud of and to boast about our youth uh, because of the way they serve this week. So praise God. Let me close in a word of prayer. We'll have a, a closing hymn. Dear Father, we just thank you again so much for your great love for us, your goodness. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and the manner that he lived. Uh, we think about his servant nature, his humility, uh, just his willingness to be humiliated for us, or that he was not ashamed of us in any way. Uh, he was not ashamed of our sin, uh, but no, he came and he suffered amongst us. He came and lived in the midst of us, and he took the shame of the cross upon his shoulders. He took our sin upon his shoulders. Thank you that he loved us that much that he was not ashamed in his love for us. Lord, just may we respond by living obedient lives that we would not be ashamed of Jesus Christ, or that we would stand boldly for you, that we would hold out the word of life, that we would be blameless and pure children of God, uh, and, and living in the midst of a crooked and depraved world. Uh, Lord, we recognize that you have rescued us from that, that we hold firmly to that word of life because we know we desperately need the word of life in our lives. And we also hold that out because we know others need to grab hold of it as well. Uh, Lord, just may we live as your humble servants. May we be obedient to your call in our lives. Lord, I thank you for our youth. I just rejoice in them this day. Thank you for the work that you're doing in them. Uh, just that you're willing and acting according to your good purpose in their lives. Just continue to strengthen them, encourage them, uh, grow them in their faith. May they know you more and be strengthened. And as they uh, just live in this world, may they continue to, to be a bold witness for you. Uh, just sharing your love, sharing your gospel uh, to those around them. Lord, just again, we thank you and praise you for your, your goodness to us. Just may we conduct our lives in a manner worthy of the gospel. In Christ's name, amen. All right, our closing hymn. Look at our bulletin over here. Closing hymn, yes, Because He Lives, uh, we'll be singing verses 1 and 2. And just join in singing this wonderful hymn uh, from the Gaithers, uh, just reminding us of the hope that we have in Christ. So please stand as you're ready.
mass you enter out of the back first and just try not to gather too much in the halls, try to maintain social distancing, but we ask that just those in the back kind of make your way out first and we'll kind of gradually disperse. So uh, again, just continue to be patient with all with the, everything this whole time. It is what it is, but we're doing the best we can. So again, um, it's been a pleasure to be with you this morning. Wow, it's so awesome. Praise God. Um, catch myself in the uh, But anyways, pleasure to be with all of you. Great to see your faces. I uh, love all of you. Uh, what did you would be with you, so. Let us hold hands. You can hold hands with a family member uh, as we raise each other up in prayer. Uh, but otherwise, we'll just kind of raise your hands up in prayer this morning. Dear Father, we just thank you and praise you again for allowing us to gather this morning. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your love that binds us all together uh, through your Son, Jesus. And as we go forward from here, may we conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel as we hold out the word of life, as we hold out your gospel and, and cling firmly to it in our own lives. For this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, God bless you. We love you guys. And we'll see you next week.